Welcome everyone. It's lovely to be here with you tonight. Tonight's theme is Buddhist Christian dialogue. And so we're going to begin with a Buddhist chant for a change. Let me respectfully remind you life and death are of supreme importance time swiftly passes by and opportunity is lost each of us should strive to awaken awaken take heed do not squander your life Welcome to this digital contemplative prayer group. This is a place for all God's people. Whatever your beliefs or doubts, you are welcome here. If you're new to Centering Prayer, just follow the instructions as the session unfolds. You're also welcome to use the silence in any other way that is right for you. Loving God, we ask for your blessings upon this gathering recognizing that we bring the joys and sorrows of our lives here today. If anyone would like to mention silently or aloud expressions of gratitude or concern for ourselves, our families, our friends, our society, or our fragile planet, please do so now. Then prayers for my son Scott. Prayers for my sisters Claire and Julie. God. We trust that you hear our prayers, silent or spoken, wordless or in words. In 1998, at the age of 40, I enrolled as a Master of Divinity student at Union Theological Seminary. I signed up for some of the courses that were required for my degree, like New Testament and early church history, but I also felt compelled for reasons beyond my understanding to enroll in a course on Zen meditation that met five days a week at 7 a.m., requiring me to get up at 4.30 every morning to make the long subway trip uptown. It felt very urgent. And when I started to take the class, I, I felt that I had discovered something that I'd been looking for for a long time. As an, as an Episcopalian, and I'd spent my life trying to figure out how to love my neighbor as myself, as Jesus asked. But no matter what I did, I never seemed to get any closer to that goal. In church, I was often deeply moved by the rituals and the teachings but they rarely seemed to result in any genuine transformation in my behavior. Meditation practice taught me how to be mindful of the present moment, and that somehow seemed to provide the missing piece of the puzzle. Through the practice of Zen meditation, I felt myself being mysteriously transformed and found myself able to be intimate with other people in a way that had hadn't been possible for me before. Some of my angry, frightened, and judgmental ideas about other people began to fall away. I remember on the subway one day looking around and wondering who all the wonderful people were, and then realizing that the change must have been something within myself. I used to think of love as an emotion, but I began to think of it as a kind of substance 
that will flow freely through us if we can just get out of its way. Meditation seemed to teach me how to move my fears and prejudices off to one side in order to allow this substance to flow through me. The professor teaching the course, Hyung Kyung Chung, described herself as both a Christian and a Buddhist, which dramatically expanded my ideas about what was possible in terms of spiritual identity. When I first arrived at seminary and told people that I was an Episcopalian, they'd asked me who my bishop was, and I realized that that subject didn't interest me in the slightest. When I told them I had a Christian Buddhist practice, it led me into the kinds of conversations I wanted to be having. I found myself deeply involved in dialogue, not just with other people, but with other faith traditions. Paul Knitter, a professor at Union, in his book, Without Buddha, I Could Not Be a Christian, writes, as I've grown older, my faith in God has, I trust, grown deeper, but that's because it's been prodded by confusion. No confusion, no deepening. I'd been trying to walk a straight line, to toe the line in regard to my religion, repressing all the ways in which I was embarrassed by the intolerance I saw in Christianity and confused about my place in it. I discovered that when I allowed myself to experience my questions and doubts, my dissatisfactions with Christianity, my fascinations with other traditions, that I was taken deep into my faith. After discovering mindfulness, I went back to the Christian tradition looking for evidence of the transformative nature of the present moment and found it in Jesus's talk on the Sermon on the Mount about the lilies of the field and in his words that the kingdom of God is within you. For a number of years, I meditated within the Buddhist tradition and felt at home there in the silence of meditation practice. At the same time that I was struggling in seminary to figure out how I felt about many Christian ideas, I enjoyed spending some of my time in meditation halls where the word sin was never used and where there was no one hanging from a cross. But something was missing. Buddhists are non-theistic and God was never mentioned, but God was very present to me in my meditation. As I felt myself being changed by the practice, I kept thinking about Jesus and his words, and I wished I could sit in meditation with others who shared my beliefs. In Buddhist groups, I met many people who had been wounded by Christianity and had turned to Buddhism to escape from it but I myself felt that I needed to come to find a way to come to terms with Christianity and integrate my meditation more fully into my Christian beliefs. Eventually, I found a home in Centering Prayer, which enables me to combine my love of transformational silent practice with my Christian beliefs. And since then, I've heard many stories like mine of people who traveled through Buddhist meditation to find their way to Centering Prayer. This was a long ago part of my journey, but our conversations about Thich Nhat Hanh after his death a couple of weeks ago reminded me of how our hearts can be touched so deeply by the wisdom of other traditions. Jesus asked us to love, but sometimes it is a Buddhist monk who teaches us how to love. Christianity is full of beautiful teachings, but it's weak on the how of transformational practice. 
we're fortunate to live in an age in which transformational practice is being actively recovered from the Christian tradition. And this movement has partly been inspired by the power of practices from other traditions. What is missing for you from your faith tradition? What might you be able to learn from other traditions that could take you more deeply into your own faith? How can other traditions heal you? Can Jesus speak to you through the wisdom and teaching of other faiths? What will help us to become more loving? Let's close with a few words from Thich Nhat Hanh. Our true home is in the present moment. We need only to bring our body and mind into the present moment, and we will touch what is refreshing, healing, and wondrous. So now I invite you to take your posture for centering prayer. Sit with your back straight and your body flowing out from your spine. And just notice how it feels to be in this present moment. What is happening in your body? What would you like to acknowledge in your body before we begin? What kind of emotional residue are you bringing from your day? How can you be present to that for a moment before we begin? Touching it lightly with your attention, noticing yourself, allowing all of yourself to be there. Be present to all that is within you. But you can just step back from it a bit and allow it to be a bit farther away from your attention. And allow your sacred word to come to you like a bell silently sounding, calling you to prayer. Or touch your sacred breath ever so gently with your attention reminding yourself that your sacred symbol is there. If you become engaged with your thoughts, distracted by them, just ever so gently return to your sacred symbol, allowing it to call you back to the present moment. Loving God, we rest with you in this moment.
Tonight's Lexio Divina reading is from Thich Nhat Hanh's Living Buddha, Living Christ. I'll read it three times and then invite you to share a word or phrase from the passage that resonates for you. Listen with the ear of the heart. To me, mindfulness is very much like the Holy Spirit. Both are agents of healing. When you have mindfulness, you have love and understanding. You see more deeply and you can heal the wounds in your mind. The Buddha was called the king of healers. In the Bible, when someone touches Christ, he or she is healed. It is not just touching a cloth that brings about a miracle. When you touch deep understanding and love, you are healed. To me, mindfulness is very much like the Holy Spirit. Both are agents of healing. When you have mindfulness, you have love and understanding. You see more deeply and you can heal the wounds in your mind. The Buddha was called the king of healers. In the Bible, when someone touches Christ, he or she is healed. It is not just touching a cloth that brings about a miracle. When you touch deep understanding and love, you are healed.
to me, mindfulness is very much like the Holy Spirit. Both are agents of healing. When you have mindfulness, you have love and understanding. You see more deeply and you can heal the wounds in your mind. The Buddha was called the King of Healers. In the Bible, when someone touches Christ, he or she is healed. It is not just a touching of a cloth that brings about a miracle. When you touch deep understanding and love, you are healed. I invite you to share a word or phrase that resonated for you. When you touch deep understanding and love, you are healed. Wounds in your mind. Agents of healing. Agents of healing. You are healed. Mindfulness is like the Holy Spirit. Heal the wounds in your mind. The wounds in your mind. Let's close by saying together the night prayer. Lord, it is night. The night is for stillness. Let us be still in the presence of God. It is night after a long day. What has been done has been done. What has not been done has not been done. Let it be. The night is dark. Let our fears of the darkness of the world and of our own lives rest in you. The night is quiet. Let the quietness of your peace enfold us, all dear to us and all who have no peace. The night heralds the dawn let us look expectantly to a new day, new joys, new possibilities. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being here. It was wonderful to be with you. Thank you. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you, Lindsay. Thank you everyone. Thank you, everyone.